Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a storm that is coming to the United States next weekend, and this could be the largest storm of March. This will bring the potential for some severe weather next weekend, including the potential for damaging winds, large hail, and even a few tornadoes. In addition to this, this could also bring a winter storm, which is a bit rare for late March, but this will impact areas like the Northern Plains and even perhaps the Midwest. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin first with what's happening right now in the United States today that'll lead to this big storm later in the week and we'll begin with the Northeast and this is an area that we actually have a pretty large cold air mass moving through right now. You may have felt that big temperature drop across areas like the Midwest and the Southeast and that is all behind a cold frontal boundary that is now pushed all the way down into Florida and there's actually some showers and thunderstorms ongoing there this afternoon. We've actually had a couple of storms that have been strong at times across the east coast of Florida, but most of that activity is moving out to sea, and overall, the severe weather threat is going to be very low throughout the entire week. We really have very little chances of severe weather, at least until Saturday or Sunday, once that large storm comes to the country. But overall, really nice weather across much of the east coast, drying out for the most part. Lots of cloud cover across the Ohio Valley and back into the north and east. That's behind that low pressure system, and that's also where we're going to have some lake effect snow. By the way, through tomorrow morning, there will be the potential for upwards of five to nine inches of snow in parts of western New York due to a lake effect snow event. So we're not done with winter yet. There's still some lake effect snow to come and that'll also fall across areas in like Michigan, for example, perhaps northern Ohio, but overall the snow accumulation will be very minimal. Back over in the Great Plains, it is very calm right now. Very little storm activity. The only storms left are right down there in south Texas. Otherwise, very dry, very nice weather, a little bit of a cool down tomorrow morning. Many areas will drop below freezing as far south as Arkansas and even Northeast Texas by tomorrow morning. So keep that in mind. We'll be talking about that later in this forecast. And then back over on the West Coast, it's also really quiet over here as well. Only area where it's not really that quiet would be back down in Arizona and as well as Southern California. Small little upper level low that is spinning over there, and that's bringing a few passing showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm. But overall, very dry conditions. But I do want to mention it's not going to last forever because we do have a large storm that is likely as we go into this upcoming weekend. And this will bring the potential for a lot of different problems, which we will be talking about here over the next few minutes and to begin with this we're going to talk about the jet stream and the weather pattern that's happening across the United States because this gives us an idea of what's happening with the upper levels for example in the atmosphere which do play a big part into what we see here at the surface as well so let's jump right into the jet stream and as of right now we do have a large low pressure system back over in the northeast and as well as into Canada and this is bringing a lot of colder air into areas like the Midwest and back into the south and east that is all behind this low pressure system so those strong northerly winds are pulling really really cold air really out of Canada and that's going to continue over the next 48 hours across the Midwest and as well as the Southeast and then notice back over on the West Coast really crazy stuff happening here our jet stream is lifted very far up to the north and one thing this is going to do is allow for the potential of record breaking high temperatures back over in areas like Washington and that is because we have a high pressure system that is really far lifted to the north for this time of the year but what is more strange is that we have this low pressure system that is a closed low back down in the Southwest and this is really weird because it kind of snuck behind this high pressure system and this system is going to sit there by the way for a few days it's not going to leave anytime soon but once we get closer to Wednesday and as well as into Thursday that low pressure system will begin to move more off to the east and this will actually start to connect back into the jet stream the polar jet stream in particular here's the subtropical jet stream so this low pressure system will kind of ride along the subtropical jet stream and eventually as it moves to the east it'll start to actually bring the potential for an isolated severe weather event on both Wednesday and Thursday across the southern plane so that'll be kind of interesting to watch for we'll be talking about what that means here in just a few minutes and then as we go into Friday overall we're not going to be talking about much when it comes to severe weather or really any big storms because the jet stream is overall going to be very zonal we're not going to have any big dips in the jet stream with any sort of low pressure systems but watch this closely as we go into Saturday notice this low pressure system back over in Washington and Oregon in the upper levels this is the next storm that we need to watch for very closely here in the United States and I do want to mention this is still about six to seven days out so things very easily could change but we are getting more confidence here that there will be some sort of large scale storm that will impact areas across the Great Plains and eventually into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley as we go into early next week so around Monday or Tuesday around March 25th or 26th that is when I do think the storm will start to ramp up no notice this very strong jet stream back down in areas like Texas and this is something that we need to watch for very closely because again this could very easily be the largest storm that we've seen in March in addition to that this could be the largest storm that we've seen so far 
far in 2024. It's entirely possible with this sort of setup. Once we go into late Monday and Tuesday, this eventually moves to the east and notice this low pressure system becomes very negatively tilted and what that means is that this storm will be able to pull a ton of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico, eventually leading to the potential for some pretty significant severe weather. Now let's talk more about this in the future radar, give you an idea of what this storm will be go doing as we go into early next week and also talk about what's upcoming over the next few days. Beginning with Wednesday, notice there will be that low pressure system moving across the southern plains. A low end risk of severe weather does right now exist in the Texas Panhandle, western Oklahoma, and as well as back down in southeast Texas. Main concern will be isolated damaging winds, maybe some isolated large hail. That may continue into Thursday evening across east Texas, but I do think the risk of severe weather is quite low. Watch for some snow, by the way, as we go into Friday across the Midwest. I wouldn't rule out some snow there, maybe one to three inches in some areas. Eventually, as we go into Saturday, that disturbance moves to the north and east, and eventually as we go into Sunday into Monday, this could be the largest storm of what we've seen thus far in March and perhaps of 2024. Notice this Sunday afternoon, we're going to have a very large core here across areas in the central plains. We're going to be watching for the potential of snow, which could lead to a winter storm across the northern plains and as well as the upper Midwest. And another thing that we need to watch for is the severe weather potential. Now, one big thing that the Storm Prediction Center has already mentioned is that there could be a widespread threat of severe weather, quote unquote widespread, by the way, across areas in the Mississippi Valley as we go into Monday. Now, we also could see some significant severe weather even on Sunday. Here's the big question, though. Will we be talking about more of a warm core or cold core system? If it's more of a cold core system, there's a much lesser chance, essentially, of seeing severe weather and all, overall the severe weather threat would be much lower. But if it's a warm core system, we very easily could see some sort of numerous to widespread severe weather event as we go, especially into Monday, but also even on Sunday, there could be some significant severe weather. And this is what I'm talking about. The European model shows us pretty well across areas from Missouri back into Louisiana by late Monday into Tuesday morning. That potential for a widespread area of some damaging winds may exist. And even as we go into Tuesday, that severe weather threat would not stop until at least Tuesday evening across areas in the southeast. And then that low pressure system will also bring the potential for some significant snowfall to areas in the northern plains and even perhaps the Midwest. And then after that, things become pretty uncertain. But that's something that we need to watch for very closely. One other thing I want to mention is that there is still a lot of uncertainty of exactly who sees severe weather and how large the severe weather risk is in addition to any winter storm potential with this and where that exactly happens. This is where the European model shows the severe weather right around about, you know, evening time on Monday. And then this would be where we're talking about that winter storm potential at the same exact time. Notice the GFS model. It actually shows something entirely different. Notice the winter storm potential is much further down here to the south and it's much more elongated west to east. And then the severe weather potential is a little bit further back to the west, meaning that there is some timing and as well as amplitude differences with these two different computer models. So just keep that in mind. There is still a relatively high amount of uncertainty with this particular storm as we are still talking about an event that is still about six to seven days out from happening. So just keep that in mind. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be keeping you posted with the latest as the storm continues to evolve. Last thing I wanted to mention is that we are going to continue to deal with some much below average temperatures across much of the United States through Tuesday. Eventually, around average temperatures will return to much of the country by Wednesday. Cold air mass will be sitting back up in Canada all the way through the end of the week. So some of you back over in the northern plains, the Midwest and the Northeast will feel that. Here are your low temperatures for tonight and tomorrow morning. Make sure to protect sensitive vegetation if you're anywhere in this outlined area, so anywhere north of it or if you're in between this area. This is where we're going to have the potential for below freezing temperatures and even some areas as far south as southern Alabama will be dealing with temperatures near freezing. So definitely make sure you're protecting your sensitive vegetation. If you're under a freeze warning, obviously make sure you do that. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.